Hello, this is Reverend Deborah Gilbreth coming to you live from the Church of Abounding Life in Jesus Christ and bringing you a sermon this morning on navigating the narrow way. First, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the week that you have just given us. Thank you for this life that you've given us. Thank you for being our God every day of our lives. Thank you for all the blessings that you bring into our lives. Just fill us now with your Holy Spirit and teach us from your word, Lord. And uh, guide us through this lesson as we go along. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we're going to have uh, we're going to have the uh, hymn is going to be done on the uh, from a previous broadcast because my allergies have been bothering me this week. So here we go. Standing the way that we can follow you best. It's in Jesus' it's name. The that end we of the pray prayer. And say thank you, Father God. Amen. All right, let's sing our little hymn that we sing usually every week. A mighty fortress is our God. A mighty fortress is our God. A sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation. Glorious, the old satanic foe has sworn to work us more with craft and dreadful might. He arms himself to fight. On earth he has no equal. No strength of ours can match his mind. We would be lost, rejected. But now a champion comes to fight, whom God himself elected. You ask who may this be, the Lord of Host is he, Christ Jesus, mighty Lord, God's only Son adored. He holds the field victorious. God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. Uh, that is a good song. There we go. Okay, my allergies have been bothering me this week, and that's why we did that. I listened to our uh, hymn from another broadcast. Today, we're going to talk about navigating the narrow way. Most people tend to navigate in society and community by the herd instinct and look at what the other people are doing so that they can have a good idea of what they want to do. As Christians, we must realize that we cannot and must not give in to this tendency to take the path of least resistance and decide not to decide, but just to follow the crowd. Matthew 7 verse 13 says, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. 
this scripture is talking about the path of least resistance or in other words um, the easy way it is easier not to stand up for Jesus or biblical values in a simple and wayward society no one just wants to be rejected ostracized and questioned this is one reason that as Christians we must put on the full armor of God every single day and check it check in for duty to participate in spiritual warfare Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 17 tells us finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and have to, after having done everything to stand Stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We cannot afford to just completely ignore the fact that Satan and his workers are trying to steal from, kill, and destroy Christians every single day. We are not to live in fear because our God is all-powerful and he tells us in scripture not to be afraid over and over. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 reassures us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord is your God. He goes with you and will never leave you or forsake you. It is so very reassuring to know that God is with us and wants us to win in our struggle against Satan and sin. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Before we can ever get started to walk on the path that we enter through the narrow gate, we need to rebuke Satan and command him to depart from us in Jesus' name with our voices it only needs to be a whisper to work because Satan is a defeated foe and he has to let me see how this is Satan is a defeated foe, and he has to uh, obey the name of Jesus Christ. He will be safe. We will be safe in Jesus' care while wearing the full armor of God that our Heavenly Father has prepared for us. What does this entail? You may be asking this question. Well, wearing the belt of truth means that you cannot go along with dishonesty that many are willing to overlook. It means that you are standing on the truth of God, which is the word of God. It means that you are being honest with yourself about your estimation of yourself and your affairs in the world. We put on the breastplate of righteousness by acknowledging that Jesus Christ has shed his own blood in order to cleanse us from our sins. Asking him for forgiveness of our sins and accepting his redeeming power and grace to cover or eradicate our sins. We are the very righteousness of God in Jesus Christ 
when we have accepted him as Lord and Savior in, over our lives. In order to march into spiritual battle that lies before us, we need to have our feet fitted with the gospel of peace. This means being filled with joy and peace because of the good news and being ready to spread the good news. It also means living peacefully with your fellows in the world because we have the Prince of Peace as our Savior. The shield of faith in Jesus Christ and the word of God will quench all fiery arrows of adversity that the enemy can hurl at us. We must cultivate and uphold our faith each day so that it remains healthy, strong, and ready to work for us. The helmet of salvation protects our thoughts and our head from the injuries that Satan would inflict upon us. Satan usually works by deceiving us in our minds and controlling our thoughts once we have given him an entry place in our lives. Again, we must rebuke Satan by saying, Satan, depart from me now, I command you in Jesus' name. This, that is all it takes to run him off because he must obey the name of Jesus and he is a defeated foe already since the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. The last piece of armor is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. When we openly quote scripture to the enemy, God acts on his own word and defeats Satan right there in front of us. God tells the truth and his word is true. It is always true. And when we remind God of what he has said, he takes action to perform what he said he would do. Now that we have the armor on us, we are ready to do spiritual warfare in the world as children of the Most High God. When Jesus disappeared from his family and their traveling companions and went to the temple to interact with the teachers there during a feast, his parents missed him on the way home and returned to find him in the temple teaching. They asked him how he could treat them that way. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? As Christians, we are to be about our father's business all the time. We are devoted to him as a member of a royal priesthood. 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 tells us, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And you may de that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We should be declaring the praises of our Lord to each other and to those that don't know him yet all throughout our day as we walk the narrow way that leads to salvation, sanctification, and redemption. We put on the full armor of God before we started our day because we are walk, walking against the flow of the general population of the world on the narrow way. There are many who claim to know the way to eternal peace and happiness in this world, and they are deceiving many people with their smooth talk and colorful illustrations. We must pray and ask God for a spirit of discernment each day. Matthew 24, verses 23 through 24 says, At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, even Christians will be deceived by some of these false prophets. We must be familiar with the real thing if we are to recognize when someone is diluting the word of God or twisting it to make it serve their own personal ends and goals. Not everyone who comes in the name of Jesus is his disciple. Matthew 7:15 demonstrates, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. 
these are people which are not concerned about your soul and the eternal consequences for your going the wrong way and taking the wrong path. There is a gap between yourself and God when you have not chosen Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior over your life. Like the story of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke, in the book of Luke. Luke 16 verse 26 says, And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from here to you cannot. Neither can they they pass to us that would come from there. This would be the ultimate heartbreak to find out that there was a great gulf between me and Jesus so that I could not reach him in eternity. This, that is the cost of listening to and following false prophets on false paths. Jesus Christ is the way to get to the Father and into eternity securely. John 14 verse 6 uh, says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is why it's called the narrow way. It is the only way. Jesus is our great shepherd, and he is the only one who can lead us into a right relationship with our heavenly Father God and into a safe existence in eternity as saved Christians that will be in God's presence forever. Jesus talks about relationships in John chapter 10. John 10, 1 through 5 instructs us, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. That's what we need to do. We need to run away from false prophets and other ways besides the Holy Bible. Uh, to find their salvation and peace. Jesus is talking here about finding salvation and following the law or by some other means rather than accepting the Son of God as Lord and Savior in order to re receive salvation and redemption with forgiveness of sins. Jesus is the only true way to God and we must stick close to him at all times and follow his voice or the word of God. He lights the way for us to go so that we will not stumble in trying to follow him. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. Not only this, but Jesus himself is pure and true light according to scripture. John 1 verse 4 says, In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus brings radiance to our lives that cannot be duplicated by any other spiritual path or way. The energy that comes from some of these practices is of demonic origins and sources, which is often unknown to those who practice these paths. Another reason that so many people enter the broad road to destruction rather than the narrow way that leads to salvation in Jesus Christ, is that we are born with a sinful and fallen nature, which allows us to be selfish and to try to live for our own pleasure and goals, rather than to follow Jesus and live for his goals as stated in the Bible. We want to be our own bosses oftentimes, rather than have a Lord over our lives. Many people want Jesus to be their Savior and to save them from eternal separation from God, but they don't want to make him Lord over their life. Lord means boss. 
Boss means someone that I obey and follow his instructions. This is where the rebellious streak usually shows up in many humans that do not want to be told what to do by anyone, including Jesus. Jesus never forces his way on us. We have to choose him. He chose us before we were born as someone he wanted to be with. But it will never happen if we don't choose him as well. Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Jesus speaks in, of choosing us in John 15 as well. John 15, verse 16 tells us, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is another way that we are set apart from those on the broad road in life. We are able to ask in Jesus' name and receive help and provision as well as protection from our Heavenly Father. Many of those on the broad path are running on their own energy or elemental energies, which are demonic, such as crystals uh, and other elemental energies. Some conjure up spirits and get themselves into a world of trouble that is very difficult to get free from once they are chained into that system. Satan does not want to let go of us once he has us in his grips so that when we turn to Christ to save us, Satan works double time to try to keep us under his influence. Remember that he means us no good. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The main reason we want to stay on the narrow way is that it is the only way that leads to abundant life in Jesus Christ. He has promised us life and he is true to his word to deliver it to us. The others make promises that they cannot deliver because they do not give the true savior of all the world's religions, Christianity, is the one in which God is willing to take the form of man and die for us to prove to us how much he loves us. This is a unique feature that is not found in other religions or spiritual paths. He loves us so much that it cannot be comprehended the lengths that he will go to in order to win us to his kingdom. Matthew chapter 18 verse 12 says, Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go look for the one that wandered off? Yes, he will look for us like the prodigal son's father sat looking for him to return home. Even though he had acted disgracefully before he left by disrespecting his father and treating him as a source of income only. Luke 15 verse 20 recounts. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him and ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. His father saw him while he was still a long way off because he was looking at the road and wanting his son to return to him. In the same way, when we are a long way off from God, living in sin and misery, God is watching and yearning for us to return to him and come into his arms by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior over our lives. God wants us to be his children in his household, and that is why he sent Jesus to cleanse us from our sins with forgiveness so that we can be in the presence of holy God and ask him directly for what we need. We are beloved by holy God, and he is seeking to adopt us as children. This is another unique aspect of Christianity that is not found in other religions. God wants a personal relationship with us as a father to his children. We are a privileged lot. As we walk along the narrow way, we are becoming more like Jesus Christ each day. 
2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. As we travel along the narrow way, we are being transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. Uh, into the image of his character day by day as we live with him and are sanctified by him. Sanctification is what the process is called as we lose our old character flaws and weaknesses and develop Christian habits and thinking. This is a good reason to read the word of God each day. It adds to the value of your sanctification in the body of Christ. No one will ever achieve perfection while we are here on earth. There was only one perfect man, and he was the Son of God come to earth to save us. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior over your life, now is a very good time to do just that. If you want to join the body of Christ and be assured of an eternity in heaven with him, just say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner and I am in need of your forgiveness. I ask you now to be Lord and Savior over my life and to lead me through each day. I believe that you were crucified, buried, and that you were raised again to life on the third day. I want to be part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer then, I want to ask you to go to your local Christian church and tell them that you have just been saved by saying the sinner's prayer. Ask them to baptize you so that you can publicly proclaim that you are now a follower of Jesus Christ. Be certain that you are at a Christian church that believes in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There are churches that are popular that do not adhere to this belief and that call themselves Christians. Uh, this is a misnomer, though, because you cannot be a Christian without following the risen Christ. Now that you are saved, you will want to read in God's Word every day, the, and the four Gospels are an excellent place to start. They are found in the New Testament, and they are called the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read through John first, and then the other three. There are many read-through-the-Bible plans online on the computer, and you can get one of those that you like and stick to that schedule. Just be sure to read and study the Word each day. Pray to Jesus at the start of the day and all day long, and thank God at night for all He has done in your life. God welcomes you to His family. And we are all thrilled about your decision to follow Christ. Well, that is all the time that we have for this week. And I want to thank all of you that have tuned in and watched the broadcast. I will say that anyone who gives a tithe to the church will be contributing toward a children's home ministry that we will be doing to provide a Christian home for foster children, orphans, and children from troubled homes. There's a PayPal link on my Facebook page and, and on the YouTube channel under my name, Deborah Gilbert. God bless you all as you go out into the week. And don't forget to follow the narrow way and avoid following the crowd in the world. Now let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you now. And we just thank you for this time that we have spent listening to and hearing your word, Lord. Thank you for lifting us up. Thank you for providing an opportunity for our salvation 
through our belief in and acceptance of Lord Jesus Christ. Just go with us as we go out into the week and guide us each day. Protect us and provide for us, Lord. For we ask it all in Jesus' precious, holy, powerful name. Amen. And I'll see you next week. That Until I see you again, y'all have a blessed week.